welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited because we're going to be doing my 2022 TBR. So I have put together a list of 22 books I have to read. <laughs> I must read in 2022. I really love this video. I love setting year long TBRs. I love the goal of doing that. Um, and I also love shaming myself and having a go at myself at the end of the year when I watch the video and I've read like less than half. So. <laughs> that is actually painful to watch. But let's go. So yeah, I will make a video reacting to this video at the end of the year to see how many of these I read. Let me know in the comments before we get into it. How many do you think I'm gonna read? Because I was talking to my patrons and we made this list together on a live the other night. I was like, I can't see a world in which I don't read the vast majority of these books. Like I'm gonna read them. Like all of these books are books I'm gonna read. Like there's nothing on here I'm not gonna read. I'm gonna read all of them. So <laughs> I'm confident. I believe in myself. I, I can do this. <laughs> okay. But let me know what you think before we get into it. Okay, so the one I did this last year, <laughs> one of the categories was series to start. Series to start. Okay, not happening. Not happening this year. I'm a new woman. My goals are to finish all my series, or most of my series. So I'm gonna treat myself with kindness. Treat people with kindness, in the words of Harry Styles. So that's not happening this year. I think that's not happening. I think- <laughs> That's not happening. All right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna first get into the series I want to finish this year. So these are the books I definitely want to read to finish some of these series. The first book on my 2022 TBR is Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nyang. I really had to stop myself when making this TBR from just putting books I got for Christmas on it because they're the books that are like most fresh <laughs> and that I'm most excited for. There is quite a few books on this list. Now that I'm looking at it, th mm, there's quite a few I got for Christmas. Not that many. But there's like a fair few. So this is one of my favourite series. You can see her here on my favourite shelf, Girls of Paper and Fire. I absolutely love this series. We're following Lei, who is forced to be a paper girl for the king. And obviously the story has progressed quite a bit. I mean, she's like, she's like out here with a sword on the cover today. <laughs> This is what is going on. But yeah, I love this kind of Asian inspired fantasy. It's one of my favorite YA fantasy series. I just really think the world is so beautiful. I think Natasha Nyang has this real like skill at making you feel for the characters. The relationships, the friendships in this are absolutely amazing and I really appreciate the kind of representation of trauma in this in this series. I think it's done really really well especially for a YA audience. I'm not, I'm generally not ready to finish this book because I already know Natasha Yang is gonna kill me. Like <laughs> you don't oh, oh are you all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so people are gonna die there's gonna be some casualties people are gonna die and I I'm not ready but I am excited to kind of finish off this series and see where all the characters end up and what, what happens at the end. But I'm terrified and I kind of don't want it to happen either. <laughs> then we have Actual Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I really want to finish the Brown Sisters series. I actually started this in December. I was supposed to be reading it for a video which I'm now making and I think I read like the first 80 pages or something. I read like yeah, I read quite a bit of this book and I had to put it down, but I'm gonna start it again when I pick it up again. In this one, I know that Eve is the youngest brown sister and she has kind of always struggled to like find her place in life and like a career and something she's passionate about. And she kind of falls into doing this chef job at this B&B. &B. And it's obviously gonna be her and a romance between the uptight owner. Tally Hibbert's writing is just so like well-written. I, I really love her romance novels, the characters, the relationships, are really well thought out and this series is just such a fun light-hearted easy to get through series so that's why I've put it on the list. Next we have a very intimidating series oh my god <laughs> I put this on here to like make sure I do this and don't back out I can't back out we have got <laughs> Jade Law and Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee so <laughs> how many people were scared me too I was really really scared look at them Look at them. I could kill someone with this. How many pages is this? I don't think I want to know. Oh, it's over 700 pages. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. 
fine when you're not really fine. What have I gotten myself into? I have bitten off more than I can chew. So these are the second and third books in the Greenbone Saga. The first is Jade City, which I read kind of towards the end or yeah, end-ish of last year. And I've made mistakes with like adult fantasy series in the past where I start it and then don't finish it quickly enough. And I feel like that's what I need to start doing with these series. Like when I've started an adult fantasy lately, you have to get that finished within six months. Otherwise, information is leaving your brain. Information is already leaving my brain. I don't have a lot of brain space. I don't have a lot of available boxes in there. So a lot of stuff just gets shoved out once I've read it. So yeah, I do really want to read both of these this year. I've actually already got plans to read this in February. Mel Reads is hosting like a read along of the Greenbone Saga and I am co-hosting a live show for Jade War. So I have to read this in February. And I'm going to try and read this around a similar time to kind of just get them both done. And yeah, I'm scared because they're like, like chonky boys and this is like a really in-depth fantasy series like it's a lot of layers there's a lot going on <laughs> I'm fucking scared guys this isn't me this isn't me but I'm now gonna be a woman who finishes series I'm now gonna be that woman I'm now gonna be that bitch and I just need to channel that energy Next, I thought I would be kind to myself <laughs> and I've put a very short book on this list and that is Drowned Country by Emily Tesh. First of all, there's something about this cover I always find so haunting and like I just love the atmosphere of it. Um, this is a very short novella. It is the second in the, what is the series called? Is it Green Hollow Duology? Is that what it's called? The first one is Silver in the Wood. We're following this man in the series who like is part of the woods. Like he kind of like exists in this woods and then like, also him meeting and forming like a bond with the new man who lives he moves into the house that the woods is situated on the grounds of essentially it's queer it's magical it's like strange it's eerie and I really loved the first one when I read it but I think I read it in 2020 and I've had this for ages and it's literally let's con let's consult the numbers shall we it's 150 pages like Megan it's not that hard to read this is totally unacceptable. I'm on my way. And then the last two books in this category, I've put them under series to finish, but this is more like series to make progress in. This is all that is out kind of of the series at the moment. So it's all I can read, but this series is gonna keep expanding and keep expanding. So I am by no means finishing this series this year. And this is The Inugami Curse and The Village of Eight Graves by Sashi Yokomizo. So I've spoken about this before. These are by this like renowned Japanese murder mystery writer who is prolific. We're full a detective who's like this young up-and-coming detective this is all that has been translated so far into English but I think they're gonna keep translating these books so this is just gonna keep growing because I think there's like over 70 books in the original series so I'm aiming to read both of these this year they're both kind of murder mysteries in Japan and I really loved the first one because it's so interesting to read as someone who reads a lot of murder mystery to like read something from a different culture and see what tropes of murder mystery still exist and what kind of new tropes and new dynamics and 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 new things we have um in the series so I find that's a really interesting reading experience and I love the covers I love the designs of these books so yeah I'm def I definitely feel like I'm going to read both of these this year then let's talk about the 2022 releases I have on this list I've put four on this list so I haven't put too many but these are the 2022 releases that I'm like 100% sure I'm going to read well there's one that I'm like is on here to make me read it. The other three I'm sure I'm going to read, like 100% sure. Firstly, we have got The Maid by Nita Prose. I was lucky enough to get the Book of the Month version. So this is another like murder mystery kind of book. This is by Ruth Ware's editor, Miss Nita Prose. Excuse me, her debut, how exciting. And we're following this maid called Molly who has difficulties making friends, has difficulties kind of living in the world that is coded that for everyone else to live by. But she really enjoys her job as a maid at this hotel and they're one of the most renowned, like uh, most acclaimed, most loved, most rich, wealthy inhabitants of the hotel is murdered. And Molly becomes the prime suspect. And so she's kind of working, I think along with some other friends at the hotel to figure out what is going on. It's a locked room mystery and she's trying to solve what has happened to kind of get herself off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so Mara from Books Like Why has already read this and I like watch every one of her videos. <laughs> she was talking about how this is like a cozy 
mystery with that kind of like joy and fun that cozy mysteries have but it's also really well written and kind of serious so it's like a good blend of the two and that is like my genre this is gonna be five stars i don't even need to like I, there's no question about it there is no question this is gonna be five stars i am so so excited to read this it's like one of my most anticipated releases of the year and it's coming out in january so very very exciting then we have where the drowned girls go by shauna mcguire this is an arc i was very lucky to be sent i believe this may already be out in the us i don't think it comes out till february in the uk but this is the next edition in the wayward children series one of my favorite series ever it's absolutely amazing in this we are introduced to another school so in the original series we have always been at eleanor west school for wayward children the kind of loving environment that is there the caring environment for these kids that have gone into these portal worlds and loved them and they've been so at home and then they come back to our world and are like this is shit <laughs> i ain't staying here sorry i love ya but I ain't staying here. And in this, we're introduced to White Thorn Institute, another school for children who fall through doors and fall back out again. It isn't as friendly as Eleanor West's home and it isn't as safe. And I think we're also following Cora in this, who is a character I have really enjoyed in the first couple of books. I really want to reread the first few books in this series again, because I only read them via audio and I have drastically more enjoyed this series when I've been reading them physically instead. Now, the audiobooks are still amazing and I would still recommend them but for me personally I think I prefer when that whimsy is in my head. Does that make sense? I'm so excited for this. I've had the arc for quite a while and I'm kind of ashamed I haven't read it yet. It's just like I really want it to be in a vlog and um, I haven't managed to do that because I don't want to just read it and like I really want to review it for you guys and like push you to read it so that's the reason I have not read it yet. And then my other two 2022 releases I don't have copies of. First we have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley's. If you know me you'll know that I love the guest list by Lucy Foley. It was my second favourite book in 2020. I absolutely loved it. It's kind of what got me into murder mysteries. So I am very excited for this and I've been waiting for this. I went to a signing of the guest list and she mentioned this as her idea for her next book and I've been waiting like ever since and I've been scared of like has she changed the concept? That's what we've been waiting for! It's what we wanted all along! Because she sold it to us as like when you're in that kind of Paris complex where you can see into other people's rooms from across the way and like seeing things and not being sure what's actually happening and stuff like that and it just made me I actually was like I was like I need it now like give me some early proofs give me like I just what have you written send me the word doc like I need it so I'm so excited it's finally coming out I really love how Lucy Foley writes about like horrible rich people in her thrillers because I like to see them get their comeuppance and then the one that I said like it's kind of on here to make sure I re mm, mm, this is what I'm worried I'm not gonna read but we, pers we persevere. Babble by R.F. Quang. So it's like 700 pages. <laughs> I can't do it. My heart is saying no. Part of my like unsaid reading resolutions for this year was to read some shorter books like to maybe get my average book length down a bit I think my average book length is, is somewhere between 320 and 340 pages for last year and I want to get it down a bit I want to read some shorter books now this is not the way <laughs> this is not the way but this is Arif Krang's next novel that I believe is it Oxford or Cambridge I don't know, it's one of those two, but it's kind of unpacking colonialism in British universities, how steeped that is in them. And it's more like a mystery kind of element, I think. The cover's absolutely gorgeous, and I'm just so excited for this. Like, ever since I've heard about it, like, Dark Academia vibes, like, I just know it's for me. But it is 700 pages. Like, I'm fucking, like, t she said 200,000 words. I'm leaving. Like... It's too much. Okay, the next category, I do have a mini category, but we'll do that at the end. The next is just other books. Other books that are on my 2022 TBR. The first three are ones that I did get for Christmas, so I'm gonna speed through them. We have Unwell Women, which is a book I got from my boyfriend's nan for Christmas. It was completely unexpected. I'd never heard of it, and I'm so excited. It's a journey through medicine and myth in a man-made world. So it's all about how women have been treated in like medicine and when being unwell throughout history and the misogyny that is steeped in medicine essentially and I'm just so excited like I'm so interested in this I love history of forgotten women or women's history like I, I really love that as someone who you know I have a few health complaints <laughs> I think it would be really interesting to read about how I would have been treated throughout history and, and kind of even now how our medicine and our attitudes towards women's health 
are affected, you know, and like maybe things about menopause and, and things like that are all really important things for us to learn about, but I don't think we talk about women's health enough. So I'm super interested in reading this. I absolutely can't wait. Then we have True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. This is super exciting. It's told again through a series of interviews and it's written as if like this is the second edition of a book and like things have been changed and it's really, really interesting. Luca, you're so clever. Oh my God, you're so clever. We've got interviews, we've got pictures, we've got news reports, all that kind of stuff. Emails and like, now that I, oh, spoiler alert. I, oh, no, I can't say that. No, I can't say that. Okay, well, I've finished the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series with As Good As Dead. I'm not gonna say anything, but the vlog is coming for that next weekend. Don't worry. But now I've finished that. That was my ultimate like murder mystery mixed media book series I was reading. I need something to fill that hole. And that's what True Crime Story is gonna be. I'm so excited. The way this is written just seems like so different and amazing. I'm very, very excited. And then the other one um, I got for Christmas, I'll, only talk about quickly again is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is just on here because everyone fucking loves it. Like <laughs> I still don't really know the plot. I know it's about friends coming back together after a murder, think the secret history, but I don't want to know too much more about the plot, but everyone has loved this. Everyone who has read it, it was kind of on their best books of 2021, so I know I need to read it. I feel like Oh, I feel like it's gonna be so, 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 so good. If something is compared to The Secret History, like I do get a bit nervous because I will immediately want to read it, but I have high standards. The Secret History, I don't know how many of you know, like that's the book that got me back into reading. That's the reason I'm here. Like I had stopped reading for years and I read The Secret History and I just absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm very protective over it. <laughs> and I'm very like, if we were villains, I did not love because it could not compare to The Secret History. The Secret History versus every book that is compared to it. It took me a while to realize that, that you wanted to be me. So I am a bit trepidatious because of that, but I feel like I'm still gonna love it. And then we have A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger. So I haven't spoken about this in a long time, but it's always one of the books I want to read the most. I don't know too much about it. I know it's about a girl who can raise the ghosts of dead animals, but that's kind of all I really know about it. And I think something happens to her cousin. But what I've heard about this is that it's just so like beautifully written and touching and moving. And like the, the way the story moves is absolutely amazing amazing. Like In My Dreams of Hold a Knife, it's kind of a book that I have kind of selectively forgotten what I've heard about the plot because I feel like it's just an experience that I kind of want to go into blind as if I have discovered the book on my own and know nothing about it is kind of what I want from this so yeah I feel like it's I really wanted to read this last year but now I really feel like I need to read it this year. Next we have The Appeal by Janice Hallett oh my god I am so excited to read this book so this is a murder mystery told completely through predominantly emails some text conversations and some other things but predominantly all emails which is super interesting it's set in this small quaint English, English village there's been a murder and like the emails are what is supposedly helping you solve the murder and just like oh can you just tell I love mixed media murder mysteries like I just fucking love it and this was like such a big book earlier this year it's been so successful I think her next book is coming out this month I'm really really excited on the back it says a modern Agatha Christie I'm just oh I'm just ready to eat this shit up. Then we have a book I think people will be surprised to see on this list because I haven't spoken about it a lot but it is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigic. So this is a book that I think I got off of Books and Lala's Kayla's recommendation. I know it's about two sisters who move to their aunt's home and the trees start creeping in. It's a horror book. It's told even just to flip through it like there's a I don't think you can really see but there's like a lot of weird shit going on. It's getting weird. It's told very strangely, like sometimes random words will be big or the page will be written in a strange way. And I've just really enjoyed getting a little bit more into horror this year. I was, it's still not gonna be like one of my biggest genres, but I've really enjoyed the process of reading a bit more horror. Yeah, this is a book that I keep, every time I look at it, I'm like, I need to read you. Like right now, I need to read you. Next we have A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. So this one really excites me as it's been described by some people as like magical realism-y, fabulism-y, some people as thriller, so I'm really intrigued. Basically we have this guy who has an unusual talent for finding missing people and he gets a case that is at this reclusive community called Pastoral, but he disappears 
as soon as he kind of goes there and starts the case. And then we're following also years later, someone trying or a group of people trying to figure out where this man disappeared to. This was one of my most anticipated releases of last year and I didn't just quite get round to it. And I also feel like Pastoral is a cult. I get the feeling it's a cult and I love cult books. There's something about cults that I think is so captivating in fiction, but also so hard to do well because you have to do it respectfully to people who have been in cults in their lives and have left and stuff like that. So I think it's a very difficult area to handle and I think I'm always really interested to see how authors do that so very excited oh I'm just so excited for these books this gets me so excited for the new year talking about this and then oh shit I realized this is another one I got for Christmas okay everyone but it's <laughs> Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambri I've spoken about before I'm obsessed with Lizelle Sambri I watch every single one of her YouTube videos she has an author tube channel and so I've just been so excited to read this it's following this young witch who basically gets told that in order to save her family she has to kill her first love and just like hearing Lizelle speak about her writing and like her ideas I'm just so excited to read this I also just love the cover I think it's absolutely gorgeous talented brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular never the same totally unique completely not ever been done before I haven't been as excited for YA fantasy at the moment but this is one that I really really am excited for and just because I love Lizelle and I love her videos and I love the way she speaks about writing and stories and plots I really feel like I'm gonna love this okay and then we just have one mini last category which is classics I decided to put a few classics on here because I am hoping to read more classics this year. I set the goal of reading six so there's three on here. Well actually one of these I wouldn't, I wouldn't even class as one of those classics. Like I wouldn't even class it as one of those six. First we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. <laughs> women. I vividly remember watching Little Women with my friend at the cinema and then going and buying this straight away because I was just obsessed with the story and I loved that film so so much. Let me, excuse me, let me just take the sticker off the back here. How rude of me. Obviously everyone knows the story of Little Women. <laughs> it's such an iconic story and because I have that love for the story already through the movie, I feel like I'm really really gonna love this. I'm really excited and I'm gonna have to watch the film again soon because it just always makes me cry. Like it always makes me cry. Then we have have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. So Pride and Prejudice is interesting because I read it when um, I was about 10. I did like a buddy read with my mum <laughs> where we read it together because the BBC adaptation of, of uh, Pride and Prejudice, the one that's like the TV show with Colin Firth in it, I have always had such a love for growing up. It's one of my favourite TV shows. Basically, whenever I was off sick from school as a kid, like in primary school, I would watch Pride and Prejudice. Like it was kind of like a little tradition me and my mum had. We would just watch it every time I was sick. So I have a lot of love for the story and particularly that adaptation of it. I refuse to watch the Kira Knightley one because it's just not going to compare and I just don't need it like when I have the perfection right in front of me with Colin Firth. There's nothing wrong with my views or beliefs because I have freedom of speech and everything I'm saying is true. And I've just actually been re-watching that with my patrons, the original Pride and Prejudice series. So I feel like it's time I read the book again because I haven't read it in a very long time, obviously, like a decade. And yeah, Jane Austen, I absolutely love. She's definitely the, the author of classics I want to get through most. I read Persuasion a couple years ago and I enjoyed it. So I have her other books in these gorgeous editions. I really love these editions. I think they're super cool. So yeah, I have them in these editions and I'm hoping to get through more than just this this year. But considering I didn't read any classics <laughs> last year, I feel like, just, let's just start with Pride and Prejudice and see where we go. And then the final book on my 2022 TBR, and one that I, oh, I've put it under classics, but like I won't count this as a classic when I read it, is Peril at End House by Agatha Christie. So many of you will know I am reading the Praro books in order. This is the one, two, three, four, six, seven, eighth, eighth book, but I didn't read number seven because it's a play and I was just like, I don't need to read that. Okay, so we're there on the list and we've got all of that to read, but I'm gonna make my way through it. And um, Agatha Christie, I just kind of want to read all of her books because I think it's super interesting. I don't really know what's happening in this one. 
yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I often don't know the plots of the Akuparo books before I go into them. I just know I'm reading them in order and this is the next one that I have to read. So chances are I'm going to read it this year because I think I've typically been reading like two to three a year. So I would like this year to get through Perilla End House, Lodge Edgeware Dies and then reread Murder on the Orient Express. I would like to get up to Murder on the Orient Express this year, ideally. So there we have it. That is my 2022 TBR. Please let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought of them <laughs> because I'm nervous. Um, yeah, these are all kind of the books I'm most excited for. So I'd love to hear what you thought of them if you have read them. And let me know also a guess of how many of them you think I'm actually going to read. I think I'm going to do like at least like, I truly believe in myself, at least 17. Looking at that list, I genuinely believe at least 17. Like I can do it. I genuinely believe in myself that I can do it. So it's gonna happen. Um, thank you all so much for watching. If you've gotten to the end, comment. Comment a window or house or door emoji, any of the above. <laughs> comment that down below if you have gotten to the end. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all your support and love. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye. Wow.